Southwest. You are in the land of the lone prairie, where the coyotes howl and the winds blow free. <laughs> Don't smell no different here to me than do back home. There must be something wrong with your smellers. But here everything is different. The trees are different. The people are different. The houses are different. But do you know they got cows out here that don't give no milk? There's rivers out here that ain't got no water in them? And there's men out here that can ride anything with hair on it. Yes, sir, Mr. Jones. And out here, a man's a man, and the women are glad of it. But listen, New, have you got any objection to telling me where we are going? Not at all, Mr. Jones, not at all. Mr. Jones, we are now following the advice of one of the finest men in America, Mr. Horace Greeley. Mr. Greeley said, Go west, young man, and do your best. Then come back east and spend your grief. Say, how come I couldn't go back east and get my grief and come back south and hush my mouth? Boy, you are so dumb until you think Veronica Lake is some kind of a summer resort. Now listen, news. Ain't no use you get mad, because you know I was just joking. You know I know you got plenty of sense. Why, if it wasn't for your sense, we'd both be spending 11 months and 29 days in the pea patch back in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, wouldn't we? Well, uh... <laughs> sure we would. And here you come getting mad every time I say anything. Oh, July, you know I wasn't mad at you. I was thinking, that's all. And I was getting, I get to thinking real hard. I get all ugly in the face, you know. Well, anybody can see you a hard thinker just by looking at you. What was that? I said I, I'm doing some hard thinking myself. Oh. In fact, I'm doing some pretty hard thinking right now. What are you thinking so hard about? Well, I was thinking that we could take that two bits you got and buy some sardines and crack them. What do you think? Well, I don't know. I don't think we ought to go cold in hand for no sardines and crackers. And owing to the fact that that two bits we got is the last button on Gable's coat, it might be a good idea. I know, but owing to the fact we ain't greased our gum since way yesterday morning, can you think of a better way to spend that last quarter? I don't know. You have to give me time to think. Wait a minute. What do you do, young man? How do you do? Well, nice day, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice day. Very nice day. Uh, my name is Whitney. Uh, Vanderbilt Whitney. And yours? My name is Jefferson. Jefferson Lee. Glad to know you, Mr. Whitney. Oh, and I'm glad to know you, too, Mr. Lee. Yes, very glad to know you. <laughs> you know, it makes me very proud to see a young man like you in business. It certainly does. <laughs> you know, when I saw you over here, I told my contemporary, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Green over there, I said, now there's a young man in the business that's going places. But I only work here. And uh, when I said that, you said which? I only work here. You mean uh, you don't own this business? That's right. Oh. Uh, the proprietor is not in just now, but maybe I can help you. Well, Sonny, the only way you can help me is to direct me and my friend over here where we can get a room. Our money is no... We just got in town, and what we need is nothing. Anything else is a place uh, and eat, too. But it must be not. 
You might be able to room down to my girlfriend's. For the address? No, Levine. Oh, I almost forgot about that. I think I got a quarter right here in my pocket. I don't like to break big bills, you know, just to get a quarter. <laughs> we got plenty of change. Oh, oh but... Uh... <laughs> here it is. Thank you. I'll see you later. Good day, sir. <laughs> Courtney Hall. At ease. Mm, 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 mm. So, machine gun company, our present, our card at four. Still fighting World War One. Mo, I was just dreaming. That's all. Yes, I know you was dreaming. That's all you ever do is dream. It's a good thing you wasn't in World War Two. You'd dream yourself to death. Everybody else that didn't go got four Fs. You got four Fs and a G. I don't know what the G was for, unless it was for good for nothing. Samuel Holliday. That name fits you to a T. You've been on a holiday ever since the 11th day of November, 1918. But if you don't get out of here and get you a job, I'm going to give you back your rib and get me another atom before it's too late. Here, take this dollar and go out to the store and get me some meat for supper. All right, Mo. Let that go to that pool hall either. If you do, I'm coming down there and get you. I'll be right back, Mo. Oh, Mother, it's beautiful. I'm glad you like it, honey. I love it. It's darling. You know, honey, do I'm glad it's you in the beauty contest instead of Florida. Oh, Mother, Florida's all right. Well, I know, but Florida isn't like you or me either. Florida's just like old no good daddy. Florida doesn't care for beauty contests and lectures and debates of the higher things in life, like you do. All she ever thinks about is men and more men. But, Mother dear, I'm sure she'll come to the beauty show tonight. Don't you think she will? No, and besides, she'd be jealous because you'll be the prettiest girl in the show. And you're going to win a prize, too. i just love to win a prize, any kind of a prize. You will, honey. And me and your old no-good father will be proud of you, too. Mother, don't let father go to sleep in the theater and ask him to wear his Sunday suit, won't you? Honey, I don't ask your father anything. I tell you. Bob with the flowers, maybe. I'll go and see. I'll be right back, honey. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Uh, may we come in? What you said? Oh, we're not salesmen, madam. We are gentlemen of the first order. <laughs> my name is Whitney, Mr. Vanderbilt Whitney, and this is my contemporary, Mr. Green. Well, you may as well come in. After you, Mr. Green. Ah, Mrs. Holliday, I presume? Yes, I was bragging about it. Oh, uh, you know, a young man named Jefferson told us that you might have a spare room and uh, that we might occupy it. Yes, I know Jefferson very well. And uh, I do have a spare room. But I, I've never had rooms before. And I really wouldn't know what to charge you for your room in advance. Well, madam, you need not <laughs> worry about that. But, uh, well, Jefferson will be over here tonight after supper. He's taking my daughter to the theater. Ah, the theater. The very mention 
of the name warms the cockles of my heart. Yes. Are you a gentleman from the theater? Are you actors? Actors? Oh, madam. The word actors is a vulgar name for our chosen profession. We are thespians. We are the backbone of the theater. Then perhaps you'll give my daughter a few lessons before she goes to the theater tonight. She's pretty enough to win, I know. But you see, she's never been on the stage before. And if you could only show her how to act. Uh, Mr. Whitney, I... Well, now, Mrs. Holliday, the gods of luck have frowned most favorably upon you this day. Watch this. You there, slavey, go into the palace and tell Caesar I'm here. Tell him I come not to praise him. And if he don't send my wife home to cook my supper, I will slay him. At two, Brutu. Avas, be gone. Ah, there you are, my sweet. I waited for long without you. Come, let us go and prepare the feast. How was that? Oh, Mr. Whitney, that was simply grand. If you could only show my daughter how to act like that, why, I would give you and Mr. Green a room here in my home as long as you want it, for free. I would just go upstairs and rest a while before supper. I'd just send Papa to the store to get some meat. If it isn't enough, I'll send him back so you can have plenty. This way, please. Oh, uh, Mrs. Holliday, we wouldn't think of imposing on your hospitality. We had really decided this, ma'am. You really are. I'll wait. What you do? Now, this hand is really contributory. I guess you better hit me. Struck me. Uh-oh. Bust it out. Well, Pops, I've got to go now. I'll see you at the theater now. Yeah? All right, hi. girl like you ain't got no business going to seas in a town like this. You're too pretty. Honey, you need to go to swell places and meet fine people. I'd like to take you to Chicago. And I mean tonight. Sugar, what do you say? Gee, darling, I'd like to go. But that old lady of mine, well, she just died. She just wouldn't let me go. Well, I'm not worried about her. What about your old man? Oh, Papa, he never has anything to say about what I do or where I go. It's the old lady. She's a hell cat. Every time I go home, she starts nagging at me. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Why haven't you been home sooner? I'm just sick and tired of all of that. I don't blame you, kid. By the way, I was reading about Honey Dew's going to be in a beauty contest tonight at the theater. I hope she wins. Oh, she hasn't got a chance. Everybody tells her she's pretty and it's just gone to her head. Oh, come, Florida, don't be like that. Why, she... Oh, Johnny, let's talk about me. Okay, baby, let's talk about her. Yes, let's talk about her. Hey, Johnny, you want on the telephone? Okay. I'll be right back. I wonder what's keeping Sam. 
And Florida, too. She should have been here over an hour ago. Oh, Mother, you know how Father is. He's slow as molasses in January. And Florida, she's probably off somewhere window shopping. You know what Aunt Mary said about her. She has a champagne mine and a beer pocketbook. Yes, I know. Florida and your father are two chips off the same block. <laughs> You know, honey, the law must have sent us with me, Mr. Green here, and I'm so glad. Yes, Mother, but I thought you said the Johnson sent them. Yes, I know. But you see, honey, no matter what we do, whether it's good or bad, the good Lord has something to do with it. And those two gentlemen upstairs, they are big men. They're from Hollywood. They are actors or uh, thespians uh, or something like that. They're resting now, but you'll have a chance to meet them at supper tonight. And I'm sure they'll be a great help to you. Mr. Whitney's going to show you how to act on the stage tonight. Oh, Mother, that would be grand. I can hardly wait. I've finished with the dishes, Mother. Is there anything else you want me to do? No, honey. You go upstairs and fix your nails. I'll make Florida help me when she comes in. All right. Say, Lou, how come you change our name? Had to. You heard me tell the lady we was from Hollywood, didn't you? Sure I did, bud. Well, Hollywood's a big place. You folks from there got to have a big name. Well, suppose we meet somebody here from Memphis. Well, in that case, you just plain old July Jones. And I'm Bad News Johnson. And maybe in jail if whoever we meet happen to be a policeman. Sure, give yourself a big name. Huh? Mr. Vanderbilt Whitney. What's wrong about that? Oh, nothing. I just wonder why you give yourself such a big name and just call me plain Mr. Green. That's all I could think of at the time. I left the other name for you to figure out. Something you like. The only thing I like with green is cornbread. 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 Cornbread green. <laughs> That's a good name. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't never heard of nobody on the scale with a name like that. Well, what about Butterbeans and Susie? Sparrows and Hambone? Henson and Dry Bread Thomas. What about them, huh? I forgot about them. After supper, I reckon we all gonna give us a shoe shine. We going to the theater tonight. What are we gonna use for money? Didn't the lady say she had two free passes we could use? Yeah, but what I'm talking about, what are we gonna use for money to pay for shoe shines with? We got a quarter, ain't we? We had a quarter. Well, how come we ain't got it now? I spent it, that's how come. You spent it for what? This magazine. You mean to tell me you spent our last money for a magazine? Do you know what kind of book this is, Mr. Jones? Uh, I mean, Mr. Green. I know it ain't good to eat. I know that. I know. But it tells you what to do so you can eat and regular too. How? Well, when were you born and why? All I know, I was born in May. All right. Well, what do it say about you? All right. Here it is. Listen to this. This is a day of rest. Use it for that purpose. Be lazy. Relax. Let your imagination run right, but don't take it seriously, especially when it comes to work. If you're tired, sleep late. Don't worry. That's me. Yeah. A lot different between May and December, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Is you thinking about the same thing I'm thinking about? Yeah. Wonder what she gonna have for supper. I don't care what it is, just so there's enough of it. That's all I wanna know. And I hope it's chicken. <laughs>
Did you have to go all the way to the slaughterhouse to get that meat? I didn't get it, Mama. Then just why I didn't... You see, Lou, it was just like this. When I got to the butcher mark's door, you see down there, old lady was standing up there. Was old enough for somebody's grandma. And the poor old lady was crying. And you see, Lou, it was just like this here. I asked the old lady, I said, look, old lady, what is the matter with you? She said she ain't got no money to get no some tea. And she said she was hungry. Had 12 little starving children. And I just, my heart went to her heart just like this. Bumpity bump, bump, bump. Yeah, you see, it's like this here, Mama Lou. The poor old lady was standing up there at the store there. And I come out the store and the poor old lady had all them little starving children. And herself, she was just hungry. I stuck my hand in my pocket, hand the old lady money. I said, hell, lady, take this money and go buy you some tea. And the poor old lady started down the railroad track. When she got on the track, a train started down the track. The train started blowing. The poor old lady didn't. Ooh. And after a while, the train blew, and the poor old lady didn't move. <laughs> and after a while, the train run right into the poor old lady and hit the old lady. <laughs> then what? The poor old lady moved. And you took my money I'd give you to go buy me for supper and give it to her? Yes, Mama. <laughs> oh. I hope you don't have no roast pork for dinner. The Bible says the split animal ain't man to eat. Coke comes from a hog. And a hog's hoof is split wide open, all four of them. Yeah, but look, I was weaned on pork. And look at me now. <laughs> the Bible is right. <laughs> What was it? A closed shave. For who? For us. The old man lost the supper money playing blackjack. Well, do we eat? Yeah. 6.30. Regular time or daylight saving time? Well, what difference does it make? About two hours. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Oh, now, baby, don't be like that. I'll be home tonight for sure, but I'll be a bit late. The boy's going to have a little game in the back room tonight, and I have to stay out to get my cuts. That's boy. He said game don't have no skirt on. <laughs> okay, baby. What took you so long, Johnny? Business, honey. That was my beer man. Well, you stayed so long, till I'm going to have to go. Chicago still holds good. Thank you, though. Okay, and I'll call you tonight if I get a chance. Bye. Bye, dear. <laughs> What's it with this time, Pop? 
Lou sent me to the grocery store, and I just stumbled and fell. That's all. What, against Ma's rolling pin? <laughs> <laughs> Mother's been wondering where you were. I wish you'd mind her own business and let me alone. I've got my own life to live and I intend to live it. Oh, don't be angry with me. I was only trying to tell you what Mother said. Well, you're just a kid. You don't know. I hope you come to the theater tonight and vote for me. Oh, honey, do that kid stuff. I've got more important things in my life. I'm going to Chicago. Florida, is that you out there? Now, I want you all to act like human beings, especially you, Sam. Mr. Whitney will sit here, and Mr. Green will sit here. Now, I'll go and call them. Bread and butter, come to supper. I know you gentlemen are half starved by now. We sure will. Oh, no, Mrs. Holliday. It isn't that bad, but uh, we could eat. Well, it's ready. Right here, Mr. Whitney. And right here, Mr. Green. Mr. Whitney. This is Mr. Whitney, Mr. Vanderbilt Whitney. We're glad to know you, Mr. Whitney. Uh, the pleasure is mutual, I'm sure. <laughs> and this is Mr. Green. We're also glad to know you, Mr. Mr. Green. Me too. By the way, Mr. Green, I didn't get your first name, sir. Come on, Green. <laughs> How very odd. Is that your real name? Uh, uh, no, miss. <laughs> uh, you see, that's his stage name. Uh, his real name is... Uh, 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 very, uh, Mr. Very Green, that's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, this is my little daughter, Melody. Ah, very cute. She's very cute. <laughs> yeah. And this is Barbara. We call her Honeydew. My, but she's sweet. Oh, really? And this is Florida. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know when I look at you, it makes me feel that I was born 30 years too soon. Well, you was, wasn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is Mr. Holliday, Mr. Samuel Holliday. We all call him Papa, but the boys down to the pool hall calls him Old Sam. Oh, uh, Mr. Holliday, you are really a lucky man to have such a fine family as this. Yes, indeed. <laughs> he is, but we ain't. Now, if you'll all sit down, I'll bring you the food. Say, look here, Whitney, you know one thing? In my younger days, I used to be one of the great on the public stage in America. Is that so? I worked with some of the leading shows. I even down worked with the Yellow Boys. I know that's a show that you never heard talk of, because the Yellow Boys were here before the Black Boys were. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I bet Pop feels big as last. When I was 14 years old, I was with a little show once, played every time, south for the Mason Dixie line. <laughs> oh, hush, Sam. The only show you was ever with the medicine show. <laughs> and you're still taking the pills that they paid you off with. <laughs> <laughs> so far, Mr. Green, Mr. Whitney's been doing all the talking. May I suggest that you give thanks? Thank you, lady. And if we're able, we're going to eat everything that's on this table. And if there's any left in the pot, bring it now while it's good and hot. May we bow our heads. Gracious Lord, we thank thee this day for the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. Please forgive our sins and accept our thanks for these blessings. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. May I never be put to confusion. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Jesus wept. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. I thank the Lord for this meal and some more meal. Amen. Oh, just a Mr. Green, I think the host will serve the plates. 
Well, that's all right, Mr. Whitney. We can dispense with formalities. Jefferson. Mr. Whitney is showing her you how to work on the stage tonight. Go right over and have a seat and wait. Now, Mrs. Holliday, your daughter is just about ready to go down and win that first prize. I hope so, Mr. Whitney. She will. She will. <laughs> Honey, here's your flowers, and here's your bag. Come on, Papa, with a dress. You didn't forget your shoes, is you, darling? No, Mother, they're in the bag. Here, son, here's a beautiful dress. Be sure to take care. It costs plenty of money now. Come on, Trickle, let's go before you be late. Son, be sure to take care now. And don't forget, the little bit of the darling, here. Come on, Papa, let's go get dressed. I know one of you gonna win that prize, baby. <laughs> Ain't no use you come tell me about etiquette and all that stuff. I was hungry. Yeah, but you didn't have to sit up in that chair and go to sleep, now, did you? No, you didn't have to tell them folks we was going upstairs to dress, either. Because the only thing you can change is a pair of socks. And you can't do that but once. And if you could button up that coat you got on, your trunk would be completely locked. Yeah, I sort of messed up that time, didn't I? You sure did. And one of these days, you're going to find out that a man only got two eyes, two ears, two hands, and two feet, and only one mouth, which means he should see, hear, wait, and walk. Twice as much as he told. And eat. Did you call Mr. Whitney and Mr. Green? By the way, they said they'll be right down, Lou. Uh, Lou, how do I look? Like a bale of cotton with the middle band busted off of it. By the way, I thought you fellas were going to make a change. Oh, now come, Holiday. You know better than that. You're an old timer. I'm your house guest, you know. And on the first night, the house guest never changes. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. <laughs> you forget your head wasn't hung on your body. Come on, let's go. Hello, John. This is Flora. Yes. 
Look, I finally decided to take you up on that Chicago trip. Okay, babe, but where are the folks? Oh, the folks, they're all gone now. All right. Come on over, but don't bring too many things. I'll buy anything you want when you get to Chicago. Okay, I'll only bring a small bag. All right. Well, okay. See you later. Bye now. Say, Jackson, Florida being in a few minutes, and if I happen to hand you a line a jive uh, about going to Chicago and taking care of things while I'm gone, I want you to eat it up, you hear? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Tonight is a very great night in the history of our city. Tonight, for the first time, we're going to have a beauty parade, but the judges are amazed and in confusion. There's too much beauty, and for that reason, you have a part to play, and you. Your applause shall determine the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, for a moment, I see a quiet village street, a crowded city square, a dark, suspenseful theater, and then suddenly out of nowhere comes Paul and the stars born. Tonight, as you applaud, you shall choose a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you're excited, so am I. I came by plain, plain old bus. For that reason, I'm going to ask the maestro for music. And let's bring them on. What do you think? <laughs> moment for which we've all waited so patiently, the decision of the judges. Are you ready, gentlemen? Third prize, number five, Miss Lily May Mill. <laughs> Second 
second prize, second prize, Miss Juanita Spencer, number three. Step forward, please. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, the final winner, number one, the Rage Tomorrow and Choice of Hollywood and Broadway, Miss Barbara Holiday, our own little honeydew. <laughs> Well, I did, too. Where's Mother, Mr. Green and Mr. Whitney and Johnson? Oh, they went home to get ready to serve the lemonade and the cake. And also, Mama told me to bring you home with her when you got dressed. Well, all right. Say, did you say lemonade? I said lemonade and cake. Mama got a big a pitcher of lemonade down there, that tall, and a cake that big, and you ought to see it. <laughs> well, that's no treat for a girl just won a beauty contest. Let's go over and get a little. Yes, but I can't stay long, though. But I we, let's go outside until she get dressed. The special dance number by Red Calhoun and the Boyle. Turn them loose, Gate.
All right, folks, don't go away. Red and the boys just taking a breathing spell. They'll be back. There'll be more music and dancing. Johnny, isn't it about time that we were leaving to go to the station? Oh, take it easy, B. Uh, the train don't leave until midnight. Why hurry? We still have a plenty of time. Okay, if you say so. What's the matter, babe? What do you think, Matt? She's your sister, isn't she? Sure, she's my sister, but what are you trying to do? Oh, don't be like that, babe. The kid's easy to look at. I'd like to meet her. Well, there'll be plenty of time for that after we're married. But I wonder what she's doing here. No, thank you. Yes, sir. It's going down there. Mr. Whitney, I'm worried. I never should let old no good Sam out of my sight. No telling why he's taking her to you. In Florida, she's gone too. I told her to stay home anyhow. Every time my back is turned, she leaves this house. She just ain't for no good. Oh, now, 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 Mrs. Holliday. Uh, take it easy. The girl's all right. Uh, but uh, I suggest that uh, uh, me and Mr. Green here go out and see if we can find them. I think I know where I might uh, locate them. Uh, uh, Mr. Green. Mr. Green! Uh, we'll find them, Mrs. Holliday. You just take it easy. We'll be right back and get some of that good old lemonade and cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, son, you know one thing. I know that honey you was gonna win that contest. One thing about it, look at her. She's beautiful. She's taking after old Maine. Anything the old Maine do, he well do it. <laughs> son, you know once I was in show business myself. Why? Why are you in show business? Yes, I was in show business. When I danced, couldn't nobody hold me alike. <laughs> son. <laughs> That's too light for me. Johnny, you know there's something funny going on around here. Not only a miracle could keep Papa and Honeydew both out of Mama's sight at one and the same time. Well, maybe they'll celebrate. I just heard your old man say that Honeydew won the first prize in the beauty contest. Huh? That is a miracle. But I'm afraid it won't be a happy ending. We'd better get out of here. Okay, I'll go over and start a conversation, and you slip by to the ladies' room and get your things. Okay. <laughs> well, how are you folks doing? Fine, 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 fine. 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 If anything y'all need, to just call me. Okay, I will. I will see that you get along fine. Are you enjoying yourself, baby? No, I don't like the thing. Well, if you don't like the joint, you'll go somewhere else. Oh, I must go. Mother will be furious. Now listen, sweetheart. You just begin to live. You should go to new places. See new people. I can take you all those places. Wait right here. I'll get your papa when you leave. <laughs> Miss Honeydew, your mother's worried about you and Miss Florida, too. I just saw Miss Florida go in that restroom over there. Are you sure, Miss Florida? I didn't know she was here. Oh, yes, ma'am. It's all right. And she's still in there, too. She sure is. That room right there. 
And you ought to go in there and tell her too. where she was, and you too. I've been almost crazy. You tell your old no-count dad I said to keep flowers there till I get there. Do you understand? Stay there till I get there. Jellison, you stay here and watch this house till I get back. I got work to do. Yes, yes ma'am. Wait uh, excuse me, Miss Florida, but, uh... What do you want, funny face, and what are you doing here anyway? Well, uh, I'd just like to have a word or two with you. Well, I haven't got time to be bothered with you now. Uh, yes, but you see, I got a message for you from your dear mother. Don't you dear mother me. I don't want to hear anything that you have to say or she has to say either. Anyway, I'm going to talk with Johnny. Come on, Johnny, let's go. Okay, boys, I'll see you later. Yeah, but for something like this, I can fold the trust one eye. <laughs> 